This is part one of a multi-part video showing you how I installed a tri-fuel conversion kit on my Stanley All-Weather 5000. Please subscribe to my channel and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be working on my conversion kit, which will make this into a tri-fuel generator. So not only can I run it on gasoline, but I can run it on a propane tank, no matter if it's a, you know, my whole household propane tank or my um, grill propane tank. So let's get started. This kit that I bought includes this little donut thing. And what the instructions tell me is that it goes in between the air filter and the carburetor. So I have to take off the air filter um, and then I place this in here. There's a little, um, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little slit inside that when the propane is pumping, it pumps through there into the carburetor and that's how it runs. One of the things I have to figure out is where to install this regulator. Now the instructions say I can install it in any position. I can install it straight up and down like this. Um, I can even do it sideways. Um, it shows I can do it upside down. The only position that I cannot do it in is it's laying down like this. So I have to figure out if I'm gonna mount it up here, down here. I guess if it was up here, it would go upside down. On the side somehow. Um, and then, you know, I have to find the best position. I'm thinking, what I'm worried about, if you can see down here, this is where I fill, actually that's where I fill the order oil with. I think the oil is on the other side. So I might be able to get away with putting it here. It's a little close to the wheel and a little close to the muffler. Hmm. I wonder if I can install it somehow outside here. This would be perfect. It actually did come with a bracket. It came with this bracket here. So that might be able to help me somehow. I think the best location is going to be right here. Install it upside down like this. The only thing I want to make sure it doesn't hit the muffler. I also want room to be able to get to the spark plug. Drill a hole here, drill a hole here. I can have access to, move it over actually a little bit. I can have, have access to the spark plug, anything I need down here. There's nothing in the back, so I can easily drill that. Intake here, I'll take where come out, come down, drop down, and go in this way. I kind of like that. All right, well let's get started installing the donut first. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take the air filter off. All right. There's a clip here and a clip down here. Now there's a little tube right here I'm just pulling out. That's from the gas tank up at the top. I guess that's just for fumes get recirculated into the 
air filter. All right, got some gloves on. I don't want to get too dirty. Here's the air filter. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six nuts right here. Get a couple tools. It's kind of weird. I have a Stanley generator and have Stanley tools. I actually did not do that on purpose. The main reason I bought this generator was only because this is the only all-weather generator I could find. Did a little research online. There's lots of great generators out there, at different cost. I mean, very similar for different, for, for similar things, but different cost for the exact same thing. So the main reason I bought this one was solely because it was all weathered. Plus, this was the biggest tank that I could find, even though I believe. They fibbed about the uh, size of the tank. I think it's closer to nine or 10 gallons, not 12 gallons like it's advertised. I have two five gallon fuel tanks to refill this. And I tried to put both of them in there and I could not fit 10 gallons into this tank. So it's gotta be smaller than 10 gallons. One more, and this piece of plastic will be coming off. All right, here we go. So this is the, the mounting for the air filter. And you can see here, here's the choke right here. Here's the thing they call this a butterfly switch or something like that. They say leave that open. So now I want to take this back plate off. But first, there is a hose, intake hose right here. Here's the butterfly. So as you open the choke, that opens and closes. Allow more ear and more fuel in as needed. So now I want to remove these bolts that are holding the backing of the air filter to the carburetor. I actually want to. Move this. All right, let's see if I can take this thing off. It might be a little screw somewhere. There is, there's one. There we go. So this is back backing of the air filter. And you can see here, here's a gasket that came with 
the generator. We're going to leave that on. Now what happens is if you take this donut right here and you install it right here and they give you some extenders and propane will be pumping up through the bottom into this chamber and being sucked through the carburetor. So what I have to do now is here is extenders. The screw on these extenders like that and try not to pinch this gasket. There we go. And the donut will go looks like I might take one of these off first. It'll go something like this. Make sure that the choke can open and close, which it can. And this gets installed in here. This hose will get attached here. And then this end will go to the regulator. Okay. Now the question is, do I, am I going to have to cut this bar out? Because once I try to get this back plate on, is it going to fit? That's the million dollar question right there. Okay. So now that I figured out that it is going to go like this, we'll go upside down and go into this direction. The hose will come out here. And once that gets attached, the regulator will be mounted up here with the inlet coming in right here. So it'll be coming from this generator area hose all the way down to here. I like that. That came off. Something's not right. Actually, I got that backwards. This goes where the regulator is because it has a little switch right here that you can actually adjust the flow and then this piece on the other side of the hose just the um, elbow goes to this donut right here It'll screw right into this donut and actually go just like that 
So let's do a let's do a dry test. They say don't use Teflon tape, just in case a piece of it breaks off. You don't want to be suck through the system. Actually, that works out perfectly. Come over here. Just like that. Perfect. Come out. Of course, I'm going to have to cut this hose. But you can see it'll come out from here. Follow the hose into this inlet right here. So I'm going to have to cut the hose because the hose is way too long. But I think that will work perfectly. I really like that. This is working out good. So far so good. The only worry is about this plate. take this hose. This is going to have to be extended, but let's mount it right there. Let's take this bad boy off. Let's see if I undo these. And one of the things is a gasket on this side, and they actually supply another gasket for the other side. So you can see the back of here, and this will this gasket will go right there. Perfect fit. Let's unscrew these. See if somehow if I install this backwards. I don't know if you see what I did. I put the screws through the backing of the air filter, and then put the donut through the spacers. And I'm just installing it backwards. Just to see if it will even fit. Which is not looking good. This is really, really tight. I did not see a way that I can install this without removing this pole right here. Oh, I'll hate to do it, but I think I have no choice. Standard screws that hold the spacing. Looks like I might have got the backing on. I can't get this spacer to go on. Now the issue is even if I get this on, I didn't put the gasket on first. 
which is really stupid. I'm actually gonna stop right now, reverse these screws, take this bad boy off. If I get this thing on, I'm not coming back. I should actually probably go ahead and seal it on here and go ahead and tighten that up. Because if I get this thing on, it's going to be a one-time thing. It's not going to go on and come back off two or three times. I might as well just do it. So what I'm going to do is put some what they call pipe dope or pipe sealant on these threads right here and screw this on. Just apply it around the threads. And once it dries, it will make a really good, good uh, connection. Really good seal. So you can see the arrows here saying airflow goes this way. One of the other things I want to do is go ahead and clamp this hose down. And then I'll cut the excess from this side. So you can see here I'm just going to clamp this bad boy down. Let's just get the slack out here first. That looks pretty good. Good position. Now I'm going to clamp it down. Here we go. So it's all nice clamped. So one of the things before I run it, I'm definitely going to test these connections. What I want to do is get some soapy water, brush it on these connections right here, make sure there's no leaky gas. You'll start seeing bubbling. All right. There's that extra gasket. I'm going to feed these extenders through here, put the gasket on. Like so. And then the backing of the air filter will go on like that. Put the hose through. And now I get the fun of trying to reinstall this thing. Very, very tight fit. And who knows, I might have to cut this bar. I hope I don't, but I might just have to. I won't know until I try.
All right, so I got this back plating on with the donut on there. And you can see I do have some clearance with the backing. So now what I want to do, I want to make sure that I screw this on tight and that I have a good seal between the carburetor, the donut, and then the backing of the air filter. I want to make sure there's no spacing in between here whatsoever. So I got to make sure I have a really, really good fit. And you see, once I push it on a little bit, it looks like it's really snug. And with screws, it will get even snugger. And then I'll have a little gap to install the air filter. What I'm worried about is the cover. You can see down here, there's not much room at all down here. But let's give it a shot. So one screw right here, one screw right here. And what I'm worried about is that these screws right here might be too long. These bolts, I might actually have to cut these off. Hopefully not, but we will see. There we go. Those are kind of long. Let's see what happens when we put this thing on. If we can put this thing on, this little piece of plastic. Oh man. This is just getting tighter and tighter. I might just have to cut this thing. Cut here. Cut it down here. I have to install an extra bar over here. That should be fine. I don't know what I cut, I cut that with. I don't have a saber saw or anything. I might just have to cut it with like a, uh, a Dremel. All right, so I'm gonna decide to cut this post off. I'm just gonna stick something right in here that, in the air filter, make sure there's no shavings that get in there. I'm just gonna use this little hand sawer. I don't have any real saber saws or anything. I have a Dremel. I just don't think that's the safest thing uh, because there is gasoline in here. Even though I do have it shut off, I just don't feel comfortable with that. So I'm just going to use this little handsaw and see how it goes. Once I got gum in there, it was pretty, pretty good, actually. Oops, let's move this out of the way. Make sure I don't cut any fuel lines or anything.
All right. So you can see, I cut through here. I'm gonna have to come down here, probably cut here, around here. I have to take this wheel off. So I just take this bolt out, mount it somehow, you know, prop it up. Put a brick or something under here, just to give it some evenness. Whew, I'm out of breath out of that. It actually took a shorter period of time than I thought it was going to take. All right. Let's get this wheel off. All right, so I got this propped up here. Let me show you really quick. I just have it on a case. It's a uh, drill case. Works pretty well, it's just temporary. I'm gonna take this bolt off so I can get the wheel off. Should be pretty easy. I remember putting these things on. Yep, there it goes. It comes right off. So you can see here, it's taken off. It's just held up by this drill case. So I got to figure out where the best sawing location is. I still want support for this wheel. So I'm figuring. Right about here. I don't want to be too close to being here because I want to install a second bar. Or not a second not a second bar, but a replacement bar from here to here. So I think if I cut around here, even if this is at an angle, I'll still be able to install a bar here. So alright. Hopefully these wells are pretty uh, done properly. So, all right, let's do this. So you can see about halfway through, maybe three quarters of the way. This is a workout. It's almost there. There we go. Daddy-o, I got that bad boy off. Now I can easily install this. There it is. This little post is taken off. Won't be in the way anymore. I'll install a secondary post from here. All the way down here, punch some holes in here. Hopefully, I'll see how the support is. Hopefully I won't have to put a third bar. I might put another bar in here. This actually might be a better location than over here. I'll see. Whew. Hope you enjoyed part one of my Tri-Fuel Conversion Kit. Please subscribe to my channel and click here for part two to watch me install the regulator and support posts.